so I'm a little late to the party on this, uh, talking about the sizable chunk of gameplay CD Projekt Red recently dropped on us from their next masterpiece, Cyberpunk 2077. Straight up, before I get into specifics, I, like many of you, was totally blown away uh, by what I saw. And after watching it through a couple of times, uh, I want to talk about my hopes, as well as some concerns I have about the final product. Starting off from a visual standpoint, this game looks better than I had hoped. Yeah, what they showed had all the fancy graphics, but more so, the world. The world here they have built. Such insane attention to detail, making it look not just like this cool futuristic place, but one that is very lived in and has seemingly taken a, a turn for the worst. That's really the beauty of it to me, obviously drawing heavy inspiration from Blade Runner, a heavily flawed future. As soon as they got out into that street scene, I, I just wanted to go. I wanted to go everywhere, explore all the nooks and crannies of Night City. I hope they can make everything in this world look as cool and as intriguing, you know, like I said, something you want to explore as the parts they showed here. Sometimes, you know, we get, we get the best during these showcase type demos. And then the game comes out and uh, maybe these areas are just as awesome, but uh, the rest of the game isn't as great. And while I'm on the subject, all the characters they filled this place up with, I can almost hear gaming PCs across the world screaming, getting ready for takeoff uh, as players move through these crowds with the graphics cranked. And the amount of variation in those NPCs, you know, with so many, it was crazy to not notice any repeats. Uh, they were probably there. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really notice any and how they were all doing different things. There was like one guy drinking a cup of coffee. Another guy was walking around with a briefcase. Uh, that was probably the part that impressed me the most. Uh, was that just me? D uh, did that impress you guys as well? That uh, part where they walked out onto the street scene? Let me know in the comments. And again, it's not just about how cool it is to see how uh, visually impressive it is. It's the fact that this feels like the next step in making open world games feel real and alive and I, I think that's something that the genre has kind of been missing as we try to you know push it into the next generation and so yeah that is something I'd say could also be a concern uh, will they be able to keep things uh, so lively uh, so congested like I said I, I could see that being a struggle for a lot of PCs and, and certainly consoles and which, since I mentioned that, let's talk about the console releases. Back at E3, they said they were, quote, targeting the current gen, the PS4 and the Xbox One. To my Switch boys out there, uh, yeah, I, I, would not, I would not bet on a Switch version of this. Maybe, maybe down the line, uh, also depending on when this releases, uh, I know there's definitely got to be a, a Switch hardware revision coming sometime soon whether it be like a switch pro or a full-blown switch 2 maybe something like that down the line but i definitely wouldn't bet on it with the switch we currently have because even the xbox one and ps4 that seems like quite the task for how crazy this game looks i could see especially on those base versions uh, many compromises needing to be made and i'd be worried about sacrificing too much of the experience or uh, needing to provide too low of a quality one uh, to get them on those boxes. Now I have no doubt that even if this game does come to the Xbox One and PS4, it will still come to the next gen as well. I totally see this being a system seller for console players early on in the life of the PS5 and next Xbox. I mean, think about it. The beginning of these console cycles is typically the roughest when it comes to releases. And I feel safe in saying this is going to be a game of the year, hell game of the decade contender for many people. So giving the PS5 and next Xbox some uber enhanced version of this at launch or in like the launch window, I think could help everyone move a bunch of systems. And with how long it sounds like we'll be waiting for the game, I wouldn't be surprised if the initial launch of this title is at least close to the launch of the next crop of systems. Gameplay-wise, I want to say that I really love how hard they were stressing the roleplay aspect of this game. Creating your character, shaping them, as well as the world around you with choices. This is another thing, though, that I feel devs often over-promise and under-deliver with. 
right? I mean, how many times have we heard the, oh, your choices can change everything. There's limitless possibilities. Only to find out that everything pretty much boils down to like an A and B quest line. And I think it is smart to always keep your expectations in check with stuff like this. But still, uh, seeing this world that they seem to have cut no corners to create, I do want to have faith that they're going to give us an ample amount of choice that is on par with the world they've made here. And going off of that roleplay aspect though, I've seen many people uh, take issue with the forced first person perspective. If you're not aware, uh, as of now, this game can only be played in first person. Uh, I do want to say that I'm sort of with you guys. I prefer to play these types of games in third person, especially when it's something where I'm creating and customizing my character. You know, I, and I'm going to dress them up and put them in different outfits and that. I, I want to freaking see them. And you're going to be able to in uh, some of the cutscenes and that, but yeah, I want to see them while I play. And I also kind of feel like when it's first person, this is more of a personal thing probably, but to me when it's first person, it feels like I'm the character. Uh, where third feels more like I'm playing as a character, if that makes any sense. And I would also acknowledge that there are a lot of people out there, people I even know, uh, that are very prone to getting motion sickness from first person games. So I definitely see where those people are coming from. But for me, even though I want it, I wouldn't go as far to say uh, jo <laughs> join the change.org petition that I saw to add third person to the game, which we always know how far those go. Uh, in, f in fact, there should be a change.org petition for change.org uh, to make those petitions actually mean something. I understand that they felt the first person is more intimate, more immersive, and it seems like a lot of the cutscenes and, and character interactions are designed to be experienced in first person. I, re I remember plenty of times where, you know, these conversations are happening and guys get like right up into your face, or uh, there's the one where they like attacked you and they knocked the character to the ground. And, and they'd probably have to do a lot to get all of those events to play out in third. Uh, if anything, you would probably have to get switched in to first during the uh, these cutscenes. Still though, even if it's going to be janky, and I know like with uh, like the Elder Scrolls games, the third person can get a bit jank at times. Even if you know, even if it's not going to be that polished, I would say I'd like to see the option. And I would assume uh, PC players will probably be in store for a mod that lets you play in third person regardless. Moving a bit further into the story aspect, uh, this was more of a personal gripe. I, I liked the, the events I saw, how they played out, and how it did kind of look like the choices mattered. Uh, but I, I, and again, this is personal. I didn't really see many people take issue with this, aside from me. But during what we saw, most of it occurred with this NPC partner named Jackie. Don't be needing this anymore, pussy. I could not stand this guy, just way too obnoxious of a character for me. And while I'm sure you won't be doing everything with him or even with other characters, I definitely hope we get to go in alone for much of the game. If I had a choice on this, I wouldn't deal with this dude. Uh, him being in just constant roid rage, hulk smash, and one-liner mode. He felt like such a stereotypical dude bro video game character. Uh, totally, totally took me out of the experience multiple times. And again, I know this is my feelings. You might love this guy, uh, but I, I, I hated him. So I think it'd be nice if there are other companion characters that uh, perhaps maybe you could choose them for missions. Choose who comes with you, Mass Effect style. Uh, maybe there's some that are more mellow because, yeah, I'd avoid this guy like the plague. Couldn't, couldn't stand him. And I'll finish by talking about the uh, combat we saw because this actually ramped up for me in terms of interest as the game went on. At first, it, it seemed kind of bland. Just your typical cover-based stuff. We saw the little speed boost thing too, but it wasn't thrilling me. The car chase sequence too, I was like, eh, I guess that's cool. But when we got to the part with the Mantis Blade upgrade, that's where it again felt more RPG. Just the, just the fact that you could use those to climb the walls, that was something that blew me away. Like, I, I could see that being huge if you, say, wanted to play as more of a stealthy character. And then, you know, they used the gun hack, which allowed them to uh, drop down and kill one guy. And uh, while you're killing him, the other guy's just screwing with his gun trying to get it to work so you don't have to worry about... You know, gunshots going off, and then they just turn around and slice that one. 
Uh, awesome. That was awesome. Uh, I'm not usually a strictly guns blazing or a sneaky type player. It's more of what I'm in the mood for. I like to live in the moment with those sorts of choices. So I imagine, I hope, uh, there are going to be a robust amount of options in that regard. You know, same with the boss fight. They used a, a scan ability to identify a weak spot that presumably you wouldn't know about without scanning. And still, uh, once they found it, uh, there was the issue of getting to it. So the, they had to use the slide and like bullet time ability to keep getting in position to shoot at it. That's, yeah, this is the sort of stuff I like to see. And it drives that RPG focus instead of the just, oh, walk into the room, shoot all the guys, repeat. And if you like doing that, if you want to do that, I, I hope you can. I, I hope there are, like, you know, gun upgrades in that that allow you to just stand in front of guys and point your gun and everything in front of it just gets melted. You know, I want I want everyone, that's, that's the best when everyone has the options to play the way they want. That's another hope for me, that they can deliver an ample amount of them. In summary, I'd say I'm extremely impressed and hopeful uh, when it comes to this game's ambition, but that's also what concerns me a bit in some aspects. Uh, whether it be them not delivering or overlooking some things being, while being caught up in others, it just seems like there's so much going on in this game that I, I feel like it'd be hard to manage it all. However, these guys are coming off of The Witcher 3. One of the best action RPG experiences of all time, in my opinion. So even if this does seem like a tall task, it's hard to say there'd be anybody more up to it uh, than CD Projekt Red. And these aren't guys, this is actually, this is kind of key. This isn't a team that will rush things out the door. Uh, they don't have to answer to some corporate overlords like an EA or an Activision who's going to be like, yeah, you got to get the game out by this date and don't worry about this other stuff we're just going to chop it off and sell it as $25 DLC and you know you got to make the cosmetic packs we can sell for $10 a pop not saying you won't have DLC the Witcher had DLC but given the history of this company I don't think that stuff's going to feel forced and again the key they're not going to be trying to uh, rush it out the door just to get it out there they're going to I think they're going to take their time uh, to get all these things just right and deliver us something incredible Anyway, with that, this video is a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on this Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay demo in the comments. What are your hopes and concerns going off of what was shown? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the dystopian future CD Projekt Red is creating for us. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, follow me on Twitter at Johnny Zakari and join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. Jesus Christ! Why did I live?